Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at MPLS. That is multi-protocol label switching. And what we're going to do in this lab is we're going to implement MPLS unicast IP forwarding. We're going to show you the basics and the foundation for MPLS. MPLS is used unlike your typical routing protocols it is called layer 2 it is used at layer 2.5 is what they call it and it uses switches based on labels instead of having to go into a routing table and having to do an IP lookup on the next top destination so MPLS examines these labels that it assigns to subnets and not the packet itself. So MPLS is running over your existing IGP or your layer 3 protocol. That's how MPLS knows how to get the best path through the network is via your interior gateway protocol. Again, MPLS uses labels instead of instead of IP addresses to switch these packets. So MPLS is a packet switch network type. And you have to have you have to have Cisco Express forwarding or Ceph enabled on your Cisco routers to perform these lookups. So it's look it's using the forward information base, the FIB, and there are also two other information bases with MPLS. You have the label information base, and you also have the label forwarding information base. So you have the FIB, the LIB, and the LFIB. And we're going to take a look at these in this lab show you how they all fit into MPLS. And the lib is, con is created in the control plane. The LFIB is created in the data plane. So that's a basic look at the th some of the theory behind MPLS. What we're going to do in this lab is we're going to we're going to show you how to configure it on these inside of our network. We have two customer routers, customer one and customer two in this lab. What we're going to do is we're going to be running MPLS on the ISP routers, ISP R1, R2, and R3. And we're also going to implement an IGP. In this case we're going to be running EIGRP. So we're going to set up EIGRP process, I'm sorry, EIGRP Autonomous System 1 on all of our ISP routers. And we're going to advertise these, these networks into EIGRP. So we're going to advertise the 1 network, which is our connection from ISP R1 to our customer 1. Then we're also going to add the 12 network, which is our connection from ISP R1 to ISP R2. So now let's go into ISP R2 and get it configured with the IGP. In this case, we are using EIGRP at layer 3. We'll do the command network 192.168.12.0 with the slash 30 subnet. That's going to be our connection to router 1. We can see our neighbor adjacency has just come up with R1, ISP R1.
So let's go into ISP R3 now, set up EIGRP, autonomous system one on R3. And then our network statements, the networks that we're going to advertise into our routing protocol. In this case, we have the two network, which is going to customer two. And we also have the 23 network that is going to ISP R2. So let's go on to ISP R2 just to make sure I have two EIGRP neighbor adjacencies. And we do. We can see our uptime for router 2 and router 1. I'm sorry, router ISP R1 and ISP R3. So now let's go on to ISP R3. We'll verify this connectivity. If I do a show IP route, we can see that we have some EIGRP networks that we have learned and they're now showing up in our routing table. So let's try to ping from ISP R1 to the customer, which is going to be 130.0. Uh, actually, looks like we looks like we forgot to turn off auto summarization in EIGRP. As you can see in the routing table, we're seeing a slash 16 for this 130 network. So we're not seeing the 0 0.1 network, or the 1 network. We are seeing the slash 16 coming in. So, so we're going to turn off auto summarization within EIGRP because by default it is turned on. We'll do that with the no auto summary command. So again, very important that you disable auto summary within EIGRP within your EIGRP.